Now, if you're one of those people, make sure you stick to the end of the video because I think this video could be the advice you need to get like on your way to earning money from your passion. <laughs> What's going on guys, so just a quick little video about like a, it's like a comment, like statement. I got through the Instagram DMs like literally 10 minutes ago and I think, uh, I just felt like I needed to go on like a little bit of a rant about this and I think that if you either have no money or you're earning money but it's not like it's with a job that you, you don't really love and you're just using it to get the money, like there's no other reason behind having that job, then I think this video could be quite valuable for you. So if you're one of those people, make sure you stick to the end of the video because I think this video could be the advice you need to get like on your way to earning money from your passion. Anyway, I got this uh, DM on Instagram like literally 10 minutes ago from this kid who lives in the Netherlands and like he likes my content he said like you know your content's really good i like the message you're trying to spread with earning money from your passion blah blah, blah. but he said if uh, him he said it's not like possible or it's just like an idea but he can't really execute on it because he can't just give up his job to to like to, to pursue his passion basically he said uh, what he does is he goes to uni and he's got like a little uh, like job on the side where he works in the supermarket to get like just a little, little extra income basically just to, to finance his books or you know whatever and basically he can't just give up that little job he's got on the side to pursue his passion because he can't go a few months without that extra income so he can't give up like the stability of that job to pursue like something like an idea in his head that might not even you know work out in the end and as soon as he said that like i just got so many ideas in my head because that limiting belief was so recognizable for me as well because I had the exact same belief. I thought the exact same at the time like when I was just getting started and just like trying to uh, turn Brampany into a business basically when it was just an idea and I, just, I didn't really know like, how to execute it. And um, basically last summer I had no money whatsoever. Like I was like absolutely broke as fuck. I, uh, I even started doing like random stuff around the house like cleaning up. I cleaned my dad's car for 20 euro just to have like a little like income to build on. Like, that's how bad I was at the time. Like, I just had no money whatsoever. And I couldn't get a job either because that sort of like defeated the whole purpose, didn't it? Like, I wanted to like start my own uh, business. I didn't want to be working for someone else. You know, I wanted to be like the, the entrepreneur basically. I didn't want to uh, be in like a nine to five job, stuck in a nine to five job, being depressed. The way I saw it was like the more time I spend working for someone else, the less time I've got to like work on my own business. And basically I tried to like save all my time that I had to to learn how to like build your own business or how to like execute on the idea that I had which was brand Paneer, like the social media marketing agency that I've got. And I got to this point where I had no money because I didn't have a job, but I didn't really know how to get further. I didn't know how to like start brand Paneer, basically. And then I thought, okay, then well, I need to buy a course or I need to seek a coach or I need to buy books but I didn't have the money to buy the books or the course or stuff like that. And I just remember this one point in the summer, because I had the time, I was still trying to like, keep YouTube up, keep my social media up, you know, like work on my personal brand. I remember like in the summer, there was this time where I'd done a collaboration and it was like a different part of Holland. And I had to like dip into like me, me savings to pay the fare for the train. So, and that, I, I can't remember what it was at the time, I wanted to buy, I think it was a book. And I had to take the money. No, it was a tripod, that was it. It was a tripod for me camera. I had to get money out of like my savings that I wanted to use for my tripod to pay for the, the train fare it was. And I, I just felt like I can't keep this up any longer. I can't, like, it was getting to the point where I was like depressed. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if it's a way out, but I just thought like, I need to, I can't get a job because if I do get a job, then that just defeats the whole purpose. And I wasn't like the entrepreneur, everyone, you know, I wanted everyone to think I was. And, you know, I was looking on Instagram and you see, you know, these people like quitting the jobs and within six months, they're in six figures, figures and all stuff like that. I wanted to be one of those people, but I, I couldn't because I didn't have the knowledge to, to, to like pursue it basically. And uh, like a little later on, I went back to England, uh, like with my family to see more family. And I was at the airport and I was just flicking through books, you know, I think we got there quite early. My mum always gets to the airport like two hours before and so I was in the bookstore flicking through books and I seen this book called The 10% Entrepreneur by uh, Patrick McGuinness. And, you know, just said to me, Dad, like, can I just get this book for, to read on the plane? And he said, yeah, go on, go on, just get it. 
And once I started reading the 10% entrepreneur, that like that was such a game changer for me. Basically, it's about like living your dream without quitting your day job. And it just destroyed all the limits and beliefs I had about not being able to have a job because I wanted to be, uh, you know, I wanted to start my own business venture. And basically the book's about the 10% entrepreneur. Uh, so basically he's not a full-time entrepreneur. He's got like a side project, which he calls a side hustle. And that's what he wakes on between the hours of seven in the evening till two in the morning. And then he's just got his nine to five job. So uh, this way you've got the stable income, you've got the, the money that you need to buy the books or the course or anything like that. And in your spare time is when you work on your, your side project, which for me was brand paneer. As soon as I seen that, I, I got the first job I could find, which was uh, all around fitness training in my, my local gym, which was perfect for me at the time because I do like love going to the gym. I'm very passionate about fitness and nutrition and like self-improvement and stuff like that. So that was perfect. I started going to the gym, working in the gym for a few days a week. And in my spare time, that was when I started working on brand paneer. This way, I had a stable income. So like, I wasn't as, like the risk wasn't as big. Like it's, let's say brand paneer fails. I've still got this, like the monthly income. So I didn't really have like that problem anymore. I had money to start buying courses and that's when I bought like the Ty Lopez social media marketing course, then the Joe Soto course, and then obviously Iman Gatti's Influence Ignited later on. And basically with that stable income, I had so many more options, but it wasn't like I was limited for time because in my spare hours, I was working on brand pain. And obviously like you will miss a few hours sleep here and there, but at the end of the day, you know, it's worth it because you're you're pursuing something or you're like you're going after something that you really want to do and then later on like in the book you get to that point where he's earning like just as much money from a side project as he is with his regular job and then you get to that point where we can decide then okay do i quit my day job and go all in on like my side hustle or you know do i keep both or you know basically that's that's when you get the option to to go all in or not so my advice to you guys and also like the guy in the dms as well is like if you really want to like pursue your passion or earn money from doing what you love then do it in your spare hours like obviously he went to uni and then he you know he works at the supermarket a few hours and then from i think like eight o'clock onwards till two in the morning he could work on a side hustle you know obviously you might have homework or you've got like obligations or you know social obligations or anything like that but you, there's always spare time there's always time that you just messing around or you're on YouTube or Netflix. No, if you watch one episode of Netflix less, you know, that's an extra seven hours in the week that you've got to work on your side hustle or your side project. Sleep an hour less, there's 14 hours, you know what I mean? It's just find the spare time to work on your side hustle. Be patient. In the end, it'll just all come together and that is when, you know, you can decide like, okay, do I go all in or don't I? You know, do I keep me regular nine to five job and that's just all up to you so that's my advice for you guys and obviously this is not the most fancy way to do it or not the way people on instagram portray like they do it you know like it's not uh, the dream way where you quit your job and you're in six figures in six months or stuff like that but you know then again how much of their life like the entrepreneurs on instagram the so-called uh, next generation entrepreneurs how much of their life are they actually showing on instagram that is true like obviously they're just showing the highlights so whether they've actually done it this way where they've quit the job or anything like that is like up to you to believe or not but this for me like was the game changing way to start ramping it in my spare time while having like a regular job with income every month you know the stability basically so you've got the stability and then you can also go out on a limb you know risk it by starting your own business on the side as well so by getting that job as a gym instructor i had enough money to buy the books buy the courses to get the knowledge to start brand paneer and that got the whole ball rolling so actually to start my own business i actually had to get a regular job which seems a bit weird but that's just the way it went basically so anyway just thought i'd like explain this a little bit more into a video the 10 percent entrepreneur by patrick mcginnis uh, I've actually got the paperback, but it's also on Audible as well. If you want to use Audible, Audible is like a Spotify for books, really. It's just an easy way to get like reading in quicker. I'll put the link in the description box down below if you want like a free uh, one month trial for Audible, or if you don't want to, like it is an affiliate link. And if you don't want to use my affiliate link, then you can just Google Audible free trial and you'll get the same thing basically. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you enjoyed like this little rant. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do more off the cuff videos or if you like like the cinematic edits and the vlogs and whatever like that. Let me know in the comments down below in on my Instagram. Like people said, I want more tutorials instead of vlogs so that's something i'm working on as well anyway guys thanks for watching like share comment subscribe click on the little bell so you get a notification every single time i upload thanks for watching again and i'll see you guys in the next one
Gotta do what I gotta do.